Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to another episode. We got some more bite-sized business advice for you lined up. And just full disclosure, this one's not going to be bite-sized. This is a this is a doozy of an episode. This is a this is a foot-long sandwich, if you will. I mean, we got a lot packed into this episode. We're going to tell you how to run your business effortlessly. The easy way. Imagine that, right? And it's going to come in a, in a way that you're probably not going to expect. But I have an amazing guest with me who I had the pleasure of meeting a couple of weeks ago actually before the recording. So for those of you who are subscribers and listeners of this show, you know that that's very rare, but here we are. Let me bring her on before we go any further. Maury Renee, welcome to the show. Hello, Brandon. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited for you to be here. If you're watching, you can see behind her a little hint of maybe what we're going to talk about, keeping God first in your business. And yeah, we're talking about integrating faith into your business. So Maury, give me give me a little bit of a, a summary of how you even came to this concept, because I think for some people, it's very much like, OK, yeah, duh, this is what I'm going to do. And for other people, it's like, wow, I never even thought of that or it wasn't even on my radar. So kind of tell me how you came here in the first place. Sure. Well, it's funny you say that because I have um, learned an awful lot in the last few years. I've been an entrepreneur for over 30 years and I had very successful businesses. And at one point I was semi-retired and my ex-husband and I moved back home. I sold my last large business on the East Coast and life was good, you know, semi-retired. I thought I had run my business in a godly way. I was a, you know, I'm a Christian. I thought I did everything right all those years. And not that I did anything wrong, but I was about to find out a lot more. Uh, I had a couple of small businesses that I started for my semi-retirement, and one was a little consulting business, and the other was cabinet sales and design. And for the consulting business, I thought, oh, I'm not an author, but I'll write a couple books and throw them online so on Amazon so that people have something before they come to me to learn a little bit about business. And life, like I said, was great. I was very blessed and until I wasn't. So I went from healthy, wealthy in a 21-year marriage to completely upside down. Uh, first came the divorce and then the um, guy I sold my business to stopped paying and filed bankruptcy. And the one builder I had for the kitchen and design quit building. And then um, you always want your clients in consulting to grow and go. And so one of them grew and went. <laughs> and so I've known to two clients. And so I'm alone and I'm broke. And then all of a sudden I'm very, very sick and I end up in the hospital and I'm dying. And the doctors weren't sure if they're going to be able to save me or not. So it's like, okay, there goes the health part too. <laughs> like We've just pretty much lost it all. And uh, I will say God got me through everything. And obviously, I didn't die when I was in the hospital. I made it through the surgery, and but I had a long recovery, hospital bills, you know. Uh, I mean, like insult to injury consistently for a couple of years. It was just nonstop. Those are just the fun highlights. And um, after I was recovered, and I was sitting there going, okay, God, you know, like, you have me here. You must have a purpose for me. What is that purpose? And he gave me the title, Making God Number One in Your Business. And at first, I'm like super psyched because I'm like, yeah, God, you gave me mad business skills. This is going to be great. I ran my business in a godly way. And then I freaked because God's in the title and I'm not a pastor. I didn't go to seminary school or anything um, exciting like that. So I didn't know what to do. I'm like, um, I'm not equipped. I can't do this. And I started asking like the pastors of my church. I started asking all kinds of people to help me with this. And everybody just kind of blew me off. So one day I sat at the laptop and typed in the title and basically kind of threw my hands in the air and said, okay, now what? And the only way I can describe this is it's like a Holy Spirit download. He just gave me information that was mind-blowing to me. And I'm, I'm going back and some of this stuff I'm typing and I'm reading it and I'm thinking, 
wow, that's great. That's great information. I wish I had done that in my businesses before. You know, it's really good to know now. And so I finally figured out my mission that God put me on. So the book got done and it made bestseller. And then he had me do a workbook because people shelf a book, you know, and they don't actually do it. So the workbook would help. Plus it, it can be used for, you know, groups of people to get together, have a little mastermind, you know, expound on the tools and and um, have some fun and also hold each other accountable. But as I was going through this, I realized that one, um, there's some key things that I never thought of before. I had surrendered my life to Jesus, but I never thought about my business. I mean, I thought, oh, well, I'm a Christian owned business, right? And I run my business in a godly way and all that. And I couldn't, I wasn't wrong, but I was kind of far from the point. The point is we're supposed to glorify God with our business and integrate our faith a little bit stronger than I did and actually use our, our businesses to disciple. And But the biggest thing that I got out of everything in the book that I'm now using, by the way, I am following my the tools of the book in my businesses now, the increase in joy and the decrease of stress, it's mind-blowing. Like, I, I am at, at peace. I mean, I've always loved my businesses. I've had many businesses. I've done everything from starting them from scratch, buying, selling, pretty much whatever you can do with a business. I've taken businesses from zero to a million in the first 12 months. I mean, like, I had, you know, pretty successful. But it was also stressful. And now I'm like, I have all this peace in in joy in my heart. And I am now able to give give everything to God. Like I surrendered my business to him. He's the CEO, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the the greatest Trinity ever that works with me on a day-to-day basis. It's God's business, not mine. Therefore, you know, have you ever felt like you're alone at the top as a business owner. Mm. Oh yeah. You know that that's it's kind of I mean as much as we want to be there, it's not always the best place to be because the buck stops with us and then what? Where do we go when we have a problem? Where do we go with anything? Um it's not like we can run to our employees and say, "How do you think I should do this?" <laughs> you know, I'm not going to show much for um good leadership when you don't know how to run your business. But when you give it to God and You talk to him on a daily basis, have like a board meeting with him in the morning, and and you pray and you get answers from him. If you listen, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do, guide you, and that gives you the peace and joy that's amazing, and it takes the stress away because I know now that I can give everything to him, including in my business, and I don't have to worry. It's his business. He's going to give me the clients I need. He's going to direct me in the direction I need to go. And life is just so much better. And when your business life is good, it spills over into your personal life. And then your personal life is better as well. Mm. I mean, should we end the episode? Like that was was so perfectly (laughs) said. Um, We're not going to do that. But I will say, (laughs) if you're impatient and you want a copy of this book, it is in the show notes. We're going to talk more about that for the rest of the episode. But um, yeah, go grab your copy. I have mine. And if you want to start a little book club together, DM me or put it in the comments and we'll do that because this is super, super exciting. So I want to touch on a couple of things that I, I think were interesting in your response. And that was, you said your first couple of businesses, you were um, you were growing and then you sold. You didn't necessarily incorporate faith and God into them. And now obviously you do. What What's the difference? Like, can you speak to what that looks like to truly incorporate God into your business versus what that did look like for you? Because you also said that you think you, or you thought you ran those businesses in a faithful way. So I just want to be clear on what that was. Well, for one thing, um, you find yourself praying usually when something goes wrong, (laughs) instead of asking ahead of time, um, once everything falls apart, then you're praying, God, please help me. You know, I I never hid that I was a Christian. Everyone who came in contact with me pretty much could tell that I, I, I was a Christian. I didn't hide anything. But I didn't actually integrate him and my faith into my business. And 
so my so my prior businesses, you know, the ones that like I started and sold and everything. Um, I was I always thought that running your business in a godly way meant well you have integrity and you're honest and and I hear this all the time. People will say, well. I already know how to do that. I'm honest and I don't rip people off. <laughs> and I'm like, well, there's a little bit more to it than that. You should be honest and you shouldn't rip people off regardless, right? But I didn't talk to God on a daily basis about my business. I didn't give anything to him. I didn't use my business to glorify him in the respect that I didn't try to um, uh, lead other people to Jesus with my business, which is what we are supposed to be doing as Christians. And now that I'm doing that, uh, that adds joy too. It's not just joy to your calling of your business, but when you actually have the opportunity to use the marketplace to lead someone to Jesus, that is just, that is joyful. When you have the opportunity to give, and I don't mean just give, like um, I always gave to charities and things like that, but the book is full of tools and other ways that you can use your business for your community. You can use your faith in your business and community. And it, and it it really does make an impact. It makes an impact on everybody. And so now that I have um, the, the more faith integrated into my business rather than just like letting people know that I believe in Jesus or what have you, I have um, not just more peace, but I have a little bit more direction. I hear him better. One of the things that I do talk about in the book is journaling, and I, I try to tell everybody this when I get a chance to speak anywhere, is if you don't have, if you're, if you are not a journaler, <laughs> you, you should be, because um, when you are journaling like your business and your faith and, and, and everything, there are times, for example, there are times when you might feel stuck in your business. You might be in a place where you're like, oh, I wonder you know, why, why haven't I gotten any further than I have? Or I feel like I have, I'm treading water and I'm not where I need to be. I haven't gotten to my goals and things like that. You can go back in your journal. Maybe it's a month, maybe it's a year and see where you were. And on that, at, at that time when you're looking at it again, you're like, oh, well, I have come a long way. I can see here that I have really come a long way. Two other things that are important is that is also how God can speak to you. When you write things down that you see that just kind of capture your attention for some reason, it could be a billboard, it could be something someone says, something that is like really um, off the wall, you name it, write it down and then later on you will see that God is talking to you in that. And that is really important for business as well as life. But the journaling also will remind you of something that is kind of a big deal that I found out when I was writing the book. And that is your miracles. Um, we tend to get miracles in business and in life, and then we forget them because they might they might seem li- like huge at the time, and you're like, "Thank you, God, thank you, God, um, for this great miracle that you just performed for me," and like my business didn't crash and burn. But then we forget, like I don't know, months down the road, um, we forgot about that miracle. So how the Holy Spirit brought that to my attention was through this book. He kind of pulled out some miracles out of my memory that he had done in my business and in several businesses in the past. And it was exciting because as I was typing in, I'm like, oh, that's right. He did all that for me and I forgot. And remembering what he's done for you in the past will also remind you he'll do it again in the future. And it gives us more hope for the future of our business. So you have to remember the things that have happened that he's done for you so that you know that he's going to do more. And that that's another exciting thing about um, you know, making these changes of integrating faith in your business is recording them, or, you know, recording everything. And I have I have um quite a bit I go through in the book on that because it really does make a difference. Now I could go on all day, but <laughs> I'll stop there. But there's just so much. There, there's there's a lot. There's so many things I want to ask you too. And in a short episode, <laughs> unfortunately we can't, but um Maybe part two or seven coming your way soon. <laughs> for, for now, though, I mean, listen, we delivered. This is she said it like a hundred times. The joy that she has in in her business, the joy that you have, is uh, incredible. And honestly, I feel the same way. It's it's the peace, the joy, the lack of stress. I'm thinking back to my last business. 
very similar story to yours where I was able to grow it, sell it, and then just it, the stress involved with that because I God was not present. And quite honestly, at that time, I wasn't even a believer. So there was there was no God present at all in or outside of business. It was just like I, I had walked away from the Catholic Church because I was like, this isn't for me, not away from God necessarily, but I hadn't found my way back yet. So that was like even more stressful for me. But now by comparison, oof, things are so easy. And that's what I mean. And you said it. We joked about it before the episode. Um, ha having God as your, your board of directors, the CEO in your business, um, however you want to say it, so, so important to go there first and seek that wisdom. So I absolutely love this message. And again, I like we don't need to dive into the specifics of the book. Just go get it. Like what? How have you made it 16 minutes into this episode and you haven't bought the book yet? Are, are you nuts? But outside of that, Maury, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just I'm so excited about this. And full disclosure for you and for the listeners, um, there's been a lot of guests on this show who have books and products and I've never bought one of them. I've always supported them, but I actually have this book in my house because I'm that excited to dive in. And I know that this principle will change the way you run your business and will change the way you, you run your life and you integrate the two, especially. So um, I just want to put that out there because this is not just like me providing a platform for you. Like I really, really believe in this message in your mission. And I'm so excited to see where you take this. I want to talk to the person who was me uh, just a few years ago who didn't have God in their business is hearing this message and is saying, this all sounds good, but I don't even know where to start. Obviously, go get the book. But like, what is step one in hiring God in your business? And how do you integrate him to make those decisions and to start talking to him and to start having those conversations so you have the wisdom and the guidance to move forward? Well, the book starts out in the first chapter of explaining why go why God owns your business in the first place. You know, this is an interesting concept because um, even myself, you know, Christian for many, many years, I never thought about God as owning my business. I thought that he, you know, allowed me to have it because I worked hard for it. And I've talked to a lot of Christian business owners and I'll say, who owns your business? And they're like, I do. <laughs> I me mine, you know, it's mine. And I'm like, why do you think it's yours? Well, because I worked for it and and God allowed me to have it. But in all reality, God owns absolutely everything in the universe. He's a, the creator of everything. So it's his. He wants you. And here's the key. You are to steward everything God gives you or allows you to have. So I am no longer the owner. I mean, in, in, in the worldly ways, we talk about, well, yeah, I own this business or what have you. But in truly, I don't own my business. God does. I'm the steward. And when I started putting that into perspective, I'm like, but I want to do a good job for God. What does God want me to do in this business? Because I'm just stewarding it for him. So I want to do the best job I can. One of my main goals in life is that when I leave this earth, I really want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. That just means something to me. And that might not mean anything to anyone else, but it means a lot to me. And because I have that attitude, every day I can't wait to, you know, like, God, what do you want me to do today? What's your will today for, for our business? You know, the one that you let me steward, your business that I'm allowed to steward. And a lot of times I'll say it's ours, you know, I'll talk to him like a business partner. Um, but, but in my heart, I know that he owns it. That's the first step is knowing that he owns the business, you're stewarding it, and then it, it comes easy after that to look for him, look to him for help. That's number one. Mm, so basically, the answer to my question was just go buy the book, right? And that <laughs> Well, it would help. <laughs> I'm trying to give away as much as I can here, but I, eh, I appreciate all, you almost need the book. Not as not as blunt as I am, but uh, that's just who <laughs> I am. So it is what it is. Um, no, I, that's that's such a good answer. So that's step one. Um, before we wrap up, I kind of want to get your your summary, if you will, 
on what is, and while you're doing this, I'm going to put the, um, just for you watching, I'm going to put the link on the screen for you listening. Again, it's all in the show notes down below, the link to go buy the book on Maury's website. I really encourage you to go do that. There's me being blunt again. Um, but so Maury, the, the last question I have for you is, what is the what is the path the book's gonna that the book is gonna take you on accompanying with the workbook, which I love by the way, fantastic idea. Um, I know not yours alone, but I, I love how you're incorporating book and workbook to make it actionable. So where are we going when we dive into this book and we read it? What is the what is the end result for us at the other side? Oh my. Um, besides, you mean besides the more joy and less stress? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those those are important. We we definitely want them. <laughs> now you're going to see a much clearer path in your business. I believe that. I mean, I can't sit here and say, "Well, you're going to um, double your business in 90 days" or some cliche thing like that, because there isn't a tangible like that. That's between you and God. That is His. Um, you know, it's His business. He will bring you the customers that you want. The book is is um, very multifaceted, so it does show you why God owns your business, what to do from here. There's even a little kind of a, like a litmus test of um, is it really your calling? Is this business really what what God wants you to do? Uh, there are there's a lot of tools in there about how to plant seeds with your business. Um, the biggest thing that people are afraid of the minute I talk about discipling a business is they're like. Oh my gosh, I might get sued. I can't talk about Jesus. I can't this. I can't that. It's all answered in there. Yes, you can. All we are supposed to do is plant little seeds. And the book will give you tons of tools on how to plant seeds with your business without worrying about, you know, laws or offending people or losing customers or any of that kind of stuff. And at the end, there is a chapter. The last chapter is my pay it forward business method which is the method that I used for many, many years. That was what helped me to get to um, the, you know, the multi-million dollar businesses and things like that. It's based on you reap what you sow. You know, it's, it is bi biblically based. But at the time, I didn't think of God as being the owner of my business and things like that. Like I've learned some of that since then, you know, with writing the book. But the pay it forward business method that will grow your business. There's no doubt. If your heart is in it and you follow, follow it with your heart, you will um, see your business grow. Mm. I, I love that so much. I couldn't have said it better myself. That is absolutely fantastic. And I do have, I lied to you. I have one final question because I just <laughs> have to, I feel so compelled. You know, we planted a seed with this episode today. Like we have done our job. I want to go one step further because I just I always feel so compelled to save that that younger me who didn't have this answer, who didn't have the joy, the peace, the ease, yes. and, and just the blessing of being able to use the vehicle of business. The business is not really a thing, it's a vehicle to spread your mm -hmm. message and, and fulfill your purpose of why you were put on this planet. So if someone comes across the title of this episode, which Quite honestly, I don't even know what it is at this point, but they see something about God or faith and business and like, eh, not for me. What do you say to them to connect with them and at least get them to hear this message for the first time? Well, the first thing I would do is ask them, do you believe in, in paying it forward? And do you believe that what goes around comes around? Those are kind of just worldly, worldly expressions that actually come from a biblical stance. And that is, um, you reap what you sow. Now I don't believe in tit for tat totally. The Bible doesn't, um, I don't even think people really believe that it, you know, you don't get everything you give, but if you give with a true giving heart, I, I one of my, one of my sayings is, um, a true giving heart equals success. When you truly give without the expectation of getting and I get pushed back, and I explain that in the book too about how that works. But when you truly give without any expectation of giving, it is amazing that while you're giving over here, your business is going up and up and up, and it's not necessarily from who you're giving to. It is what you're getting for. Um, like God will reward you in many ways for the work, the good deeds that you do. So even if somebody doesn't believe in God, they could they should at least believe in the principle 
of um, loving your neighbor, you know, doing kind things for your neighbor, paying it forward, giving. That would be my thing. I mean, I've told um, several people, you know, that don't believe, at least just get it to read the last chapter. Get it to read the pay it forward business method because most everybody will agree that paying it forward and reaping what you sow or getting what you give are, are pretty standard and, and really work in business. I love that. Maury, thank you so much for being here. This was a, a phenomenal episode. I had a lot of fun. Um, and I hope Me you too. as a listener, you also loved it. And wherever you are, if you're watching, if you're listening, make sure you subscribe. And what I would say is just to follow up that real quick is the world understands everything that's in the Bible, like the, the words that are in the Bible, we live by those. Just like you said, I think the more important part though, is when you understand where those words are coming from and what they mean and how they can change your life, it will blow your mind. And again, that's to the beginning of the episode, the ease, the lack of stress and the joy that comes with running a business this way. I just want to give that to you. We both do. I, I know we both do. So please do your part. Go pick up the book and make sure you subscribe. Thank you for listening, watching again, wherever you are and put it in the comments. Let's start our little book club. I'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.